Okay, a while back, I did a bunch of tutorials, and when I say a while back, I'm talking like probably Blender 2.4. Not really, can't really remember if I did any tutorials in uh, Blender 2.5 or 6 since the new interface on um, uh, first person or third person shooter, basically the same depending on where you put the camera. Now I'm going to show you a very basic way to do it today no, in a couple of minutes without any programming, although I do recommend you look into the Python programming with Blender because it will get less confusing as your game grows. But I want to show you that you can create it. Uh, someone commented on a previous video that they're having difficulties. Uh, I'm assuming that they're watching old tutorials and things might have changed slightly. Although if you understand the old tutorials, the new ones are, are pretty much the same. Or if you understand the older version of Blender, the newer ones pretty much the same. These things are in different spots. So default scene here. Oh, you know what? Before I forget, I'm going to go into my user preferences here. And I'm going to enable screen casting. And I will turn that on. This is just so you can see down here in the bottom left corner of my 3D view what keys I'm pressing while I'm working on this project. Okay, so from the default view here, I'm going to delete the default cube, hit spacebar, and type in plane. And I'm going to add a plane. I'll hit S to scale it, and I'm just going to type. I don't know, 20, to scale it up 20 Blender units. Okay, so that's going to just be our floor. There's nothing else we need to do to that. Now I'm going to hit space, and I'll type in sphere. I'm not going to create a character. I'm just going to use a sphere, as I did in the old tutorials, to create our character. I'm going to make it a UV sphere. So there we are. That's our, that's our player. I'm going to hit GZ1 and hit enter, and that will lift our player up uh, so that they're lined up with the floor. Uh, you can also just hit Z and, oops, sorry, with the with the sphere selected G and Z to move it up, or just G to move it wherever you want. Z will keep it on the, G and then Z will keep it on its uh, Z axis, moving it straight up and down. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so with the sphere selected, I am going to go over here to our physics tab. Oh, and then also we want to change this from Blender Renderer to the Blender Game Renderer. Okay. So you see how that changed our physics tab here, so that it's set up for gaming, and uh, not uh, rendering in a, with the renderer. I'm going to choose here from static. I'm going to change this to uh, either dynamic or rigid. I think I'm going to go. Let's let's go. Let's go rigid. I'm going to go rigid. I've done tutorials in the past on the difference. It's not going to make a huge difference, but um, in this particular case for the player, uh, I'm going to hit. If I hit P now with the mouse over the 3D view, the mouse has to be over the 3D view, I'll hit P and that brings us into game mode. Obviously we don't have lighting and texture set up so it looks horrible, but that's what it's going to look like right now with the game. If I grab our character, move him up, and by the way I hit escape to get out of game mode. So I lift him up and I hit P, you can now see our character falls. That's what adding the physics did to it, so it interacts with gravity and other objects. So I'm going to move it back down. So there's our character. And now we're going to start uh, setting some keys for our character. I'm going to pull up this timeline here. I don't need the timeline for the game, so I'm going to turn this into our logic editor, which is where our thought for our game is. Uh, and we're going to use these sensors, controllers, and actuators, connect them all together as logic bricks to tell it what to do. Once again, we can do all this without any programming. So if you're not a programmer, you can still create a game with Blender. It's just as the game gets more developed and larger, things get kind of messy. If you watched my uh, uh, pop um, tutorials on the pop game, by the end, I was trying to do that so that the, that people could create it whether they, or edit it without being um, programmers. I kind of regretted that at the end because it became a mess, but it still worked. Um, but the sensor is going to be what happens, and we're going to say here we want a keyboard. So when, when a keyboard action happens, and right here it says key, we're going to click that and then press a key on the keyboard. And we're going to use W, S, A, and D for our directional. So W would be forward. So we're going to do that. We're going to say end, and then we'll connect those. Don't forget to connect them or they're not going to work. And our actuator is going to be a motion, and we're going to have our character move Y, which would be forward on its... So we're just going to move it 0.10. Obviously, the higher that number is, faster our character will move. If I hit P now, I can hit W, 
and you can see our character moves forward as long as I'm pressing W. I can't turn or back up just yet. We need to set those keys. But real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit spacebar, type in cube, choose add cube, and then I'm going to G, Z, and 1 to move our cube up on the Z axis. And then grab it on the Y axis, move it over here, so G and Y. And I'm going to scale it on the X axis, stretch it out this way. So it's a wall. So now if I hit P to start the game and I hit W, boom, you can see our character bumps in the wall. But you notice when I'm bumping into it, our ball is now rolling because it's a ball. So we're going to change something in the Physics tab. Right click our sphere to select it. And over here in our Physics tab, it's a little check mark with the bounce ball there that we were in earlier. We're going to come down here to Collision Bounds. And we're going to set that to Box. Uh, really, this is also one of the differences. I could set this to dynamic, but for right now, I'm just going to do rigid body and box. And now you can see there's a dotted line box around our sphere, and that's its collision. Basically, uh, it's going to act like it's a box, so it's not going to roll. And anything that touches that box, that's like its barrier, what's, what's going, it's going to interact with other objects. So now, with the mouse over the 3D view, I'm going to hit P and W, and you can see now I'm bouncing in the wall, but I'm not rolling away like a ball. So it all depends on what object you're working on, but usually you don't want your player rolling around unless you're creating a game about a fat guy or something, I don't know. I'm going to hit escape to get out of game mode there, and we're going to add uh, a few more keys here. I'm going to minimize these three tabs, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyboard, and really you should label these as your game so you can call it different things here, like I can call this back key because that's what it would be. Just for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that, but you definitely want to uh, do that in the future as your game gets larger. You don't get confused. Again, stay organized. So key S. So this time, what's going to happen when we press the S key? We're going to say end and connect that. And we're going to say motion, and we're going to go, last time we went forward on the Y, this time we're going to go back on the Y. We'll connect that and minimize each one of these. And always double check it. We also want to label these things as well. You can call them. So this would be player forward, player back, and it will just help you find what you're looking for faster in the future. Again, we'll check what we did. We'll come up here, hover, P. We got W, Z, uh, S would go back, W and S. So now let's create a turning motion. We'll say keyboard. We'll go A for our left end. So when the A key is pressed, and of course you can use arrow keys as well, or connect them both, um, in, which is all up to you. Uh, we're going to do a motion, but this time instead of location, we're going to do a rotation on the Z axis. Because remember, Z is up and down, so it's going to be spinning on the up and down axis. So here's an example. I've got the sphere selected. If I hit R and rotate, it rotates whichever way I turn the mouse. But if I hit Z, you can see that blue line now. It's rotating on the Z axis. Uh, and we're going to want to go um, on the z-axis one degree every time A is pressed. So we'll connect that. I'll hit P and we'll hit A. Good. I guessed right. It was a positive one. And we're going to do the same thing for D, but with a negative one degree. So let's minimize all these. We're going to add a keyboard and and also motion. Now I'm selecting end here, and really since we're only connecting one thing it doesn't matter, but you have end as an option and you also have or as an option. If you wanted to select both like W for forward and the forward arrow, you would want to choose or instead. That way it's one or the other. It, either of them are pressed. Uh, D will be our right turn, and we will go negative on the Z rotation. Now if I hit P, I can go forward, I can go back, I can hit D and turn one way, A the other, I can hit forward and D and start going in a circle. I can go this way. Also, again, gravity works, so I can go walk off the plane here and I will fall off the edge. Again, very simple game. Let's, uh, now what I'm going to do is with over the 3D view here, I'm going to hit 1 to go into front view. And I'm going to move in and move up. And I'm going to hit 
Control Alt Zero. And by the way, if I didn't say at the beginning of this tutorial, as you can see at the top up here, I'm running Blender 2.67. I should have said that at the beginning because this may vary in the future. But when I hit Control Alt Zero, it moved the camera to our current view. So what I'm going to do now is select the camera, G to grab it. I'm going to position it where I want. So like if I want a third-person shooter, I can put it back here. If I want a first-person shooter, I can put it in front of the cube or our sphere, our player. Again, you can script this out better and give it some better motion, give it a little bit of a kinetic feel to it. This is going to be locked on. We've got our camera here. With the camera selected, I'm going to shift, right-click our sphere, and I'm going to hit Control-P, and it's going to set parent, and I'm going to click this top one, set parent to object. Now, when I hit P, you can see our camera view is following our character. I have the camera a little close to our character. Definitely want to probably back it off some, so I'm going to select the camera here and move it back. And maybe move it up a little bit. Okay, so now you can see our 3D view here, and we're following the camera around. Of course, you can build your level now by selecting some cubes and rotating them different ways to make walls. Of course, you could be a little more um, artistic with your level development. But here we go. And of course, you can do other shapes. I can, I can do add a, just a regular cube here. Maybe add a few of those as obstacles. And, of course, I can always add uh, something. Well, let me go back into my camera mode here, camera view here. Hit P. So we're moving around our objects. And, again, if I hit a wall, I'm not going to go through the wall because of our physics settings that we've created. And nothing moves. The cube isn't moving. Just the, the sphere here. Um, but if we wanted to be able to move something, so let's say I chose this sphere here, I can make it a rigid body. I can hit P here, and now if I hit that particular cube, you can see I can move it. And push it off the edge if I want. So you can give other objects physics as well. Again, you have different ob uh, options in here. I'm not going to go over all of them. Mostly you're going to be using static, dynamic, rigid in game mode. Uh, soft bodies I haven't played with inside game mode. You know, back in the day that, that would have been uh, very processor heavy. Um, but nowadays I guess computers are fast enough to have soft bodies real time. Um, so that's it. That's it. I just wanted to share that because someone did ask a question. They were having difficulties with the older tutorials. I'm not going to go any more into this, although if you do enjoy this stuff, in a couple of weeks, January of 2014, on Fridays, I am getting into 3D stuff with HTML5. And we're going to go through a lot of stuff, very basic stuff at first, but eventually we're going to be making simple games like this. You can run in a web browser, which means you have the capability of playing them on uh, mobile devices, tablets, and phones if your hardware can handle it, um, and you have an up-to-date browser. And we'll even be designing stuff in Blender and then bringing them into HTML5 again so you can create games that will run on, uh, you know, desktop, laptop, tablet, phone, uh, regardless of OS, as long as you have an up-to-date browser, you can create the thing once and have it work everywhere. I mean, right now, Blender does work on uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, uh, you know, I'm FreeBSD, and there's even an Android port, although I haven't seen it working that great. Um, but then again, you're also very limited with your hardware on uh, on some phones and tablets, unless you have a very high-end one. But hopefully we'll see more of HTML5 growing, so check out those tutorials on Fridays starting at the beginning of 2014. Uh, every Friday there will be a new video on 3D stuff in the web browser. Of course, I say in the web browser, it's HTML5, so you can use it not just in the web browser, but as a front end for for local applications as well, since HTML is run locally. Um, and so I, I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. There should be a link in the description. Hope you found this useful, and I hope that you have a great day.
day.